we had to catch several buses to get out here from Perth. There's nothing out here. Um, <clears throat> when we are in the cadets, we did our bivouacs out in the bush of what's now all these houses at Wembley Downs. That was this bush. So we'd have weekends out there and we could be lost in the bush and nobody would know. It was a unique environment going from a quite a, a run-down, small, antiquated school through to a brand new facility. It was, um, it was difficult. Need a bit more cord wherever it is. My name is Tony Brand, and I was the architect for the Hale School Memorial Hall. I was at Hale from 1942 to 1948, both as a boarder and as a student. I was part of the association of architects between Marshall Clifton and Anthony Brand. I owe Hale a lot, not just to my schooling, but also to the fact that they saw me through, as I said, those um, critical first three years uh, of study as an architect. Uh, we, we had to do a, um, a design, a, a building, and it happened that we were all required to design a school. So I came to see um, Vernon Murphy at the time and asked him if uh, he could prepare a brief. And um, Ron Ferguson, who I then employed, later and then became a, he became a partner of mine later uh, and another architect. We, we joined up and we designed Hale School on this present site in our final year thesis. So that was the, the beginning uh, and, 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 and sort of things grew from there. Could I ask the first one first? Uh, what made you decide to make the hall in a style distinct from the rest of the school? I didn't decide. We didn't decide to make it distinctly different. It came about naturally because there's no other building in the school that has the same functions, that required the same size of, and volumes and buildings. So that, that in itself created a, a building, um, uh, that in itself created a building uh, that was different in terms of its scale and size to the rest of the buildings. What I did too was try and minimize that scale. And that's why the colonnades down the side are so important because it cuts the building in half, reduces the apparent height, reduces the scale. You, you built up on the big steps. Every steps, by the way, are the one way you can measure uh, scale. Normal steps for normal people. Doors, door heights, our door heights are slightly higher, but we reduce the scale by putting in the lattice work to soften it. The colonnades, uh, there's smaller columns around the side. Now, uh, there are all sorts of other things, but at the same time, it was a memorial building and that was important.
The Bath Memorials, they're built of one material. If you think about it, um, it's a bit like sculptures, you know, the memorials. The other thing that Ferguson contributed to was the design of the sculptured panels around the, uh, around the balcony. <laughs> uh, we'd originally allowed for some sort of panels, but we didn't know what quite was going to do. And um, uh, Gus had the idea that um, he would play around and uh, come up with some designs. And he came up with this, and I said to him at the time, I said, Oh, that looks like a, uh, a war battlefield, you know, a landscape of uh, where bombs things. He said, no, no, he said, it isn't. But I, I really think it probably did trigger him off, but he did a brilliant job with it. And the interesting thing is he not only designed them, there are only about four, four panels, but they're turned around different ways. And if you start looking, you'll see, uh, you know, you, you see those two big, circular ones there, turn turn one, but the other way or back to front, and you've suddenly got a different looking one. So he managed to get a whole lot of different looking panels, but he actually made all the all the, uh, the, the forms for it. And then the, the, the panels were then used in reverse for the retaining wall outside here. So <clears throat> no, that, that was really tremendous. At the time, it was very exciting. The, uh, the fact that the building was going to be a War Memorial Hall and it was going to look like a War Memorial, I found stimulating and, and I found that, uh, that it was great working on it. We were all enthusiastic as hell about it and we all thought we were changing the world. Well, we were, we were pioneers in the field. It was the first time off-form off concrete had been ever used in Australia. Fergie and Tony made test panels. They selected um, Jarra formwork, sawn Jarra formwork, circular sawn Jarra formwork to get a pattern. Later on, uh, Fergie changed to to uh, pine formwork and brought out the grain so that this building is finished in saw marks. The later buildings were finished in pine patterns. I think that the Memorial Hall was a gallant attempt at, at innovation and at the time it starred because it, it became uh, a forerunner of other off-form concrete buildings and, and it won a bronze medal uh, so it was obviously uh, good at the time. The building was awarded the Royal Institute of British Architects Bronze Medal for the three years ending 1961. This is awarded triennially for a building of outstanding merit erected in the metropolitan area of Perth. The building was also awarded the Architect and Arts Building of the Year Award for 1962. This is an annual award given to the best new building in Australia. I think I'd like to say that nobody tries harder than Tony Brand. He, he is a man who uh, puts his heart and soul into what he does and what he's, what he's done is excellent. Um, Gus Ferguson was a very creative man. He won, he won the Architectural Award for his year and so on and, and uh, I thought very highly of him, still do and did jobs, did buildings with him later, of which I'm quite proud. Um, Marshall Clifton was a gentleman and a scholar and a man, he didn't interfere much with what Tony and Gus were doing, but he did, he did keep them cool. And, and I liked him very much. I think I was lucky to get the, the opportunity to work with such good people and I'm still grateful for it.
dad didn't talk about things much. He didn't talk about the war. He didn't talk about Lodge. He didn't, you know, that wasn't his, his style. I probably didn't recognise the level of involvement my father had. I found out through other means. So the, the My Hall players actually helped me educate myself about things that my father did when he was at school, or after school, but for the school. Uh, and that's, that's been illuminating, and it's been lovely to, to find out more about that. When he was asked to do something for any organisation that he was passionate about, his answer was yes. And a realisation that the school needed the hall. Dad played an integral part in raising the funds for, for the, the hall itself and the hall construction. And he was subsequently involved in raising funds for the pool, for example. We didn't have a pool. He organised the raising of those funds in 24 hours with a group of, again, his network, his Hale network, was very strong. And so he was not backward at asking the question um, of others, and he, and he was well respected. I don't think they used any outside organisations to do it. It was all the fa Hale family working with the Hale family. Hmm. I've followed a somewhat similar path. Also went on to the Old Boys Committee and subsequently president of the Old Boys and, uh, and then joined the Board of Governors. My son Brenton went to Hale School, so he was the third generation um, and now is involved in the teaching staff and the administrative staff at Hale School. And uh, we've got two grandsons at the school now in, in terms of being asked to participate in my hall. We are a very close family. We do a lot of things together and to be involved and have other family members involved in it is an honour. Um, and a little bit of giving back to the school, trying to help, uh, I guess. Um, but it's a privilege, privilege to be involved. I thought my hall was going to be about the memories contained within this hall. But when I started researching and speaking to people, even with my first interview with Tony Brand, I realised that this hall's memory is, goes far further back than I'd imagined and uh, has far more wide-ranging impact than I'd imagined. So I ended up going back through Signet's Oh, way back to the 30s and the 40s. Um, in fact, it was first mentioned by Vernon Murphy officially in 1946, the idea of a memorial hall. The school is proud of its role of 600 old Halians and six masters who served with the forces during the war. The names of these shall live on forever in the hearts and minds of those who follow in the school they loved. What more fitting tribute could be paid to our 60 old boys who gave their lives in the last war than to erect a memorial building? I can think of no better way in which a man of means could use his wealth than endowing a school. He will get no spectacular returns for his investment, but generations of boys unknown to him will benefit from his gifts. And Tony Brand was a student sitting there listening to that set. And then 
not very many years later, then designed and built this hall, which I find astonishing and beautiful. Uh, but really, I suppose at its core, it's about the old boys of this school. It's about how much they cared about commemorating their mates and about, very importantly, giving to the future boys of Hale that they, who they hadn't even met yet, who hadn't been born yet. And uh, I think that's really beautiful. And it was a lot of money that they raised to build this hall and a lot of passion and I love that intergenerational caring. Mm. This, as a director writer, this has been the biggest project I've ever done and I've done some big ones. Uh, it has literally been thousands of hours of my life. But you don't really think of it that way. You just, it's just so, once you, st it's like once you start, it's got hold of you and you can't stop. And you've, it's so, there's a lot of time where you're alone and you're looking up archival things and going down rabbit holes and finding things out. But there's so much connection and uh, sitting, you know, when we had the reading of the first reading of the script, where we sat around in a room with John Prince, who was the headmaster of the school at the time, and David Bamback, who was the director of the Pirates of Penzance and a whole host of other old boys. And we sat around a huge table and read the script. You know it's gonna to have to go, Rob. What is? Uh, the memorial hall is not big enough to hold the whole school anymore. Reckon we're gonna to have to knock it down. Knock it down? Standing, clutching at the photo album and peering out into the darkness. No, you couldn't. Uh, it'd be much cheaper to build a new one. No, no, I would be devastated and so would thousands of older boys. Oh, come on, Rob, it's just an old hall. No, no, no. <laughs> um, and then there was going to be images projected of... Um... I was... I have never been more nervous before that because I was so worried about how they would receive it. My father was an old boy of the school and he'd been killed at the Bucher River Crossing on the Kokoda Trail. At the time of the appeal, my brother John and I uh, must both have been university students. Our mother called a family meeting. The three of us decided that our family should and would contribute something, however small, to the appeal. There's so many of the old boys wearing uniform. The school then spent the afternoon digging trenches in the observatory grounds. But it was wonderful. Um, so it's been really, really challenging and time consuming, but very, very joyful. It's like a maze. It was a building and little holes everywhere and pockets of music instruments floating around the hall. It was an eye opener being shown around the hall by one of the senior boys. I'm going to go down here again. <laughs> Don't get lost. <laughs> nice way. The most significant thing that I've learned from this experience is something to do with the importance of because it's researched work, the importance of the legacy of your participants, not mine, but theirs. I've learnt how important every single word is that's on the page and every single word that's said in front of hundreds of people that night because this show is this hall's legacy and it's also the legacy of each one of those old boys that's in the show. Friday and we are 
nearing the last day of normal classes. Since Tuesday, we've been transitioning to an online environment with each day a different group of boys in our school departing and preparing for our first day of online lessons on Wednesday, the 1st of April. This is all because of the coronavirus. And like you, we are experiencing something that we've never been through before. Hey lads, I know it's been pretty weird times right now and everything seems a bit out of order, but I hope you've settled into home all right and are ready to carry on the next four weeks. It's the guide to online learning at Hale School. In this document, it's going to provide you with some important information as you navigate the online learning environment. Um, try to see how we could continue the show in terms of upping hygiene or social distancing or whatever it was, but fundamentally because of the number of old boys that were in the show, um, it became um, not feasible to be able to have the show go on. It's great that we're finding a way to actually still run the play because a, a lot of people, particularly Julia, but not only her, a lot of people assisting her and at the school put in a massive amount of work. Obviously the volunteers and actors uh, were all pretty keen. There was a good camaraderie that was developing with all the people involved from bright young kids at the school through to some of us who are 70 or 80 years of age um, involved. So it brought, brought the community together so there's been a, a, a gap in that, and it'll be good to sort of bring the whole crew back together again. A few weeks ago, we started rehearsals for the second version of My Hall after having to suspend it last year. And it's been an interesting journey because we've had to replace cast members and change some sections of the script uh, that were no longer as relevant. And I was really worried at the beginning that it was of its time and it was uh, and its place and that it would no longer be as relevant as it was. But as we've now got into rehearsals, I can see that it's possibly going to be even better than it would have been last year. What brought me to the production, the fact that 60 years ago uh, I was the Pirate King in the original first Hail musical production. But, uh, I haven't got a very good singing voice, so that was the biggest put off. Covid, yes, actually, it, um, it's, it set everything back quite substantially in time which was unfortunate because a lot of the what were the final year boys are now in university so that's altered the schedule of having to get the boys out of university to come here in what would have been school time so hmm difficult plastic okay that feel all right right yep sorry no riveting worries. stuff for you then uh-huh Okay. Right. Okay, drop your arms down for me. Thank you. It's always the way. Um, so I almost had a sense of um, not like a lack of closure. It's nice to, to bring that, especially for some a building that's so important. So we kind of get to do the building justice in a way. I thought a lot was going to change, but not much has. Um, yeah, it's just interesting the kind of different way that you get to work with people now that I'm kind of no longer a student, which is fun. But then kind of on reflection, it, it made sense. Um, it meant that with, you know, we could, I could continue doing the work with the people that I already worked with. Um, so that's kind of a logistical thing. And I also just enjoyed the process the first time, so I thought it would be fun again the second. What we're up to today, basically uh, final fitting of costumes, and then 
photographs for the program, is it? Or, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Just making sure that everything fits and we can move. And, yeah. And it's all worked out well, all due to one person, Holly. She's wonderful. So a lot of the cast members have changed. We still have some boys who have left school but are still coming back to be in it, which I find amazing. And uh, some of the, not much of the text has changed, but a little bit of the text has changed. Mainly the biggest change has been the venue. So because of the restrictions now, we need to have more, use different spaces. So now we're just using the quad and the hall. And how are you feeling? I'm feeling uh, challenged, uh, but also very excited. Uh, the more rehearsals I do, the more excited I feel. Should old acquaintance be forgot, and never come to mind. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this celebration of Hale School's historic Memorial Hall. Come with us tonight as we share memories of this beloved and significant building. Let us begin tonight with the very reason this hall was constructed. Let us remember together. If I had to do it again, and that's, uh, I can say that 80% would probably be similar, if not the same. Uh, there are things that you wouldn't do, but with the improvement over 60 years to do certain things, uh, I, and I don't say that often of any buildings I've been involved with, because once I've finished a building, I'm finished with it. Uh, I could have improved it, and, and, and so I'm going to the next one. And I, that's why I personally haven't kept any drawings. I don't keep drawings of any of my buildings. I have an old photograph and that's it. And, and I think here that when we got the medals, other people stopped and had a look at it. And, uh, and, and you know, I'm not saying that the hall uh, 
hasn't got its faults, but I've never really heard any severe criticisms about the function of the hall. Um, the sights are pretty reasonable. As I said, the sound, people couldn't believe that you could actually have a stage production without uh, having uh, any um, technical enhancement that they could hear at the back of the hall. So those sorts of things you know, are, are, are really worthwhile because if a building functions properly and it's designed, it'll go on. It's only when buildings stop functioning properly that they become, uh, well, not wanted, you know what I mean? And not cared for. So perhaps we're very lucky. Sure, look, the stage could have been probably bigger um, in, you know, in hindsight. Maybe they got the chance. So I guess I've been fortunate. I, I've won about 17 or 18 awards over my architectural life. But you can't do that without the help of other people. I mean, we couldn't have built this hall without the Old Boys Association. Do you know what I mean? Look, yeah, look. Uh, in fact, I guess sitting here probably means a lot more to me.